This is my take on the hot wire prints. I've been playing around with the colors for a couple years now. I've had several color combinations work quite well, but here are some of my favorites. This fly is another great winter pattern, but it especially shines in the spring when the water is high and off color. I've also had good luck with it in very fast pocket water, where getting down fast and catching the fish's attention is crucial. Lead wire is used to help center the bead on the hook and to add more weight to the fly. Begin the fly by pushing that lead wire up into the bead. Then start your thread behind the lead wire and secure it by taking wraps up to the bead and back down. Once the lead is secure, lay down a thread base ending between the hook point and the barb. Two goose biots are used for the tail. Turn one of the biots over so that they curve away from each other and even up the tips by moving your fingers back and forth until the biots are aligned. Measure the biots to be about half the length of the shank and place them at the point where you left your thread, making sure one biot sits on either side of the hook. Take a couple of wraps to hold the biots on the hook, then pinch the biots together to ensure they are still even. If you need to make any adjustments, you can gently slide the biots back and forth until they are aligned. Take a couple more wraps to secure the biots further, then cut the ends of the biots so they butt up against the lead wire. Secure the rest of the biots ending with your thread behind the lead wire. Place two different colored pieces of wire next to the hook, longer than what you will need. Then after taking a few wraps with your thread, slide the wire back until the ends butt up against the lead wire. Continue taking wraps back to secure the wire. It is very important that the thread goes all the way to the tail, otherwise the wire won't have a clean start when you begin to wrap it. Now wrap your thread back up the shank, trying to smoothen out the body and to create a smooth taper up to the lead. If you're having a hard time making it smooth, you can give your thread a counterclockwise twist so the thread lays flat. This will make it easier to fill in the spots without creating new lumps. I recommend using a brand of thread that can lay flat. There are several brands out there that will work, but I prefer to use Danville or UTC. Now we are going to wrap the wires forward to form the body. Grasp both strands of wire between your fingers and pinch them tight. It helps to hold them so that each wire is under constant tension. If any gaps form, you can use your fingernail to push the wires back so they are tight with the last wrap. To prevent the wires from twisting, pass them to your other hand each time you go under the fly. If you find that twists do form in the wire, you can remove them by pinching the wire near the fly and running your fingers down. Don't hesitate to stop and fix any gaps. Patience is the key to a good looking wire body. Once the wire is about two thirds of the way up the fly, tie it off by placing a couple of wraps on either side of it. Cut your wire off leaving little tags of wire. Fold these forward and take a few more wraps with your thread to secure them. The thorax is formed from two strands of peacock curl. Cut the tips so that they are aligned, then tie them in leaving no gap between the tie-in point and the wire body. This fly rides deep, and the way I fish it it usually ends up in rocks. Since we aren't putting anything over the peacock to reinforce it, I like to put a small dab of super glue onto the underbody to help strengthen the peacock. Twist the peacock curl together and begin wrapping it forward to create the thorax. I like the first wrap to cover the last bit of the wire body to ensure that there is no gap between them. End the thorax leaving a little space behind the bead then tie off the peacock by taking wraps on either side of it. Cut off the remaining peacock. For the hackle, I like to use brown hen neck. Like all feathers, these have a light side and a dark side. Make sure the dark side is facing you as you tie it in. Prepare the feather by stripping off the fibers near the bottom and cut it leaving a bare stem. Tie in the feather just behind the bead. Once the feather is secure, begin wrapping it around the fly. 
ensuring that that dark side is now facing towards the bead. After two or three wraps, tie off the feather by placing thread wraps on either side of it, then cut it off close with your scissors. Stroke the hen fibers back with your fingers and take a few thread wraps over the base of the fibers so that they lean back just a little. Now you can gently cut the fibers on top of the fly, clearing out space for the wings. If you have any stray hen fibers, you can trim them out as well. Hold two white goose biots between your fingers so that they form an X shape, then scoot your fingers forward so that they are holding the biots where they cross each other. Place the biots on top of the fly, measuring them about as long as the body. Also make sure that the tips are aligned. Once you are satisfied with how they are placed, use a finger from your other hand to pinch them to the fly. Take a few thread wraps to hold the biots in place. Cut the ends of the biots, leaving little butts remaining. Then use your thread to pull them up from the bead and fold them back with your finger. Place wraps in front of the butt ends until the thread starts to go over them. At this point, I like to give my bobbin another counterclockwise spin so that the thread will lay somewhat flat. Then begin making more wraps over the biots, locking them into place and forming a hot spot on the fly. Don't worry if the butt ends stick out from behind the hot spot. Biots are very slick and are prone to falling out while being fished, so folding them back over on themselves is a great way to keep that wing from falling out. Use the turns of your whip finish to cover any white still remaining and to form a smooth collar. I've had a lot of fun playing around with different colors of wire and trying them out on the water, but the one combination that has seemed to work the best for me so far is silver and red. Try this pattern out if you get a chance and let me know how it goes. If you end up using any other color combinations, I'd love to hear about that as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing for more videos like it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to respond to all of them. Thanks for watching and tight lines.